It's rut and river. Yes. Correct. R-U-T. I rest my beard hair right on there, it. And then you know you're there. Like a nice, gentle little pillow for my right, beard. Right. And then I'm all up in it. Oh. I'm like Kobe beef for sharks. Can I ask you, what made you guys call me up about, well, this? That's what tickles our fancy. Exactly. Okay. Thought the Rocky Mountains would be rockier. <laughs> John Denver is not accurate. Man. A guy like you, who has absolutely no clue, and I can hear it in your voice, that, you know, <laughs> I mean, you know, I mean, you're a blank canvas. I mean, I can just start with you like, like from scratch. You, you're going to tell me, a grown man, you're telling me what lure to use and how to fish? You guys don't s- snap your whopper plopper off <laughs> either, then. <laughs> Sorry, Sorry I, blew- I blew up over that. <laughs> Welcome back, everyone, to the Rutten River Pursuits podcast. Podcast. I am Steve. I'm Will. Hey, I'm Ryan. I'm Catfish. And Stevie. Yeah, buddy. What are you doing? <laughs> He's all I'm, up. I'm ready to roll you, tonight. You're on fire. Guess where we are tonight? Pennsylvania. Guess where we're going? I think we're heading somewhere a little chilly. We're going to the healing waters of Lake Minnetonka. Where's that? <laughs> Is that where we're going? I thought we were going to Minnesota. <laughs> <laughs> Why are we going to Minnesota, bud? Because they get ice there uh-huh. sometime around mid-August, and it runs until <laughs> late July. They can basically ice fish year-round in Minnesota. I've, I've heard rumor of that. Something like I, that. You might want to check your facts, but I think that... It's pretty close. You know what? If we're going to check facts, I think we know who we could talk to. You think? Yeah, bud. Let's get Anna Leschishin from Anna on Ice on Instagram on the line. Anna, are you there? I am here. Anna, did I pronounce your name correctly? You did. You did. No, Great job. Nailed it. You nailed it. <laughs> Thank you. I've been practicing. Somebody's closer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> On how are you? I'm great. I'm great. A little chilly up here, but uh, I'm good. What's the current weather situation like for you right now? Well, we're currently in a warm up. We were in the we were in the teens for a couple days with some um, lows down to like ten and you know, below that. But now today we're supposed to just stay in the mid thirties and, um, for the rest, yeah, heat wave for us for the rest of the weekend. So I definitely plan to be outside. Wow. What's the ice situation like at the local lake? In the Metro where I am right now, uh, we have anywhere from like eight to 12 inches, which is great. Uh, up North where I typically do most of my fishing, uh, we're looking anywhere at like 12 to 16. Um, some of the smaller, more pan fish lakes, um, have a little bit more than that. So they're up to 18 by now, just cause we've had so many cold nights and cold wow. weeks in a row. I had frost on my windshield the other day. <laughs> <laughs> Bless your heart. Yeah. Uh, geez, 16. I think maybe three years ago we had, you know, a month of brutal cold weather and we may have got 12 or 14 inches of ice. Yeah. I don't know if we ever got close to 16. I could be wrong, but it's that time of year. So we're, I'm looking forward to amping up our ice fishing talk here. And it sounds like we've got the right person. <laughs> to, yeah, uh, I've been doing a little bit of that. Yeah, so I didn't realize it, Anna, but you, uh, you're friends with one of our friends. And I didn't realize until after uh, is that you're friends with Nicole Stone. Yes. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Her and I are on the uh, Outdoor Bound TV pro staff together. That's great. And so on your Instagram page, Anna, A-N-A underscore on underscore ice, you have a link to a YouTube video that you made with Nicole, right? Yes. Yes. That was a first ice uh, crappie video that we shot together. That looked like a lot of fun. Yeah. Oh, it was it was yeah fun is an understatement we we planned to be on the ice for you know maybe six hours and we didn't leave until pushing midnight and it was uh the crappie bite was really hot and we we couldn't stop there was just no wow (laughs) there was no end to the bite so we we just kept going where with as long as the fish kept biting how long have you been fishing Anna? oh gosh since i can remember really little kid you know open water fishing of course Ice fishing, I think the first time I ever went out, I was probably maybe five or six. Uh, well, it's part of, I, it's part of tradition in your part of the country, though, right? 
Yeah, absolutely. Any any outdoors family who really enjoys, you know, angling in particular in the summertime, mm-hmm. um, it's kind of kind of the ebb and flow of, with our seasons that you kind of migrate towards ice fishing if you can tolerate the cold. Um, so I definitely grew up. My parents are actually from Ohio, and so they were kind of transplants into oh, wow. Minnesota. <laughs> but my dad loved fishing and grew up in a fishing family. So getting the opportunity to do that year round safely, uh, kind of you know, it was a whole new opportunity for, for him. And then me being like his only child that was really excited about angling the way he was. Um, we got to really learn the sport together. So that was really fun and a, a nice bonding experience for us. Sure. Sounds like it. That, that's cool. Cause here it's typically you, you have your open water anglers and then you have your hard water anglers. And although there's some kind of blending uh, and it's probably limited to the guys at this table maybe, but it it seems like either most people, most people in our area are either committed to one or the other. There's a smaller overlap. It seems. Yeah. There's a very small overlap. Interesting. Yeah. I don't know. I think you, in in all honesty, like a lot of people are kind of taught to fear the ice. Like we're just, because it's so, it comes and goes very quickly. And and I think that, you know, we're, we're taught to kind of just, we fish, we fished last season on, you know, four to for seven inches of ice the whole season. Like it, it never really got past seven inches. No. So it's not, it's not something you take lighthearted when you're out there. You, um, you know, depending on the depth of water around here, you can get yourself in trouble. So, you know, growing mm-hmm. up in that kind of environment, there's not a lot of people. You hear a lot of guys around here go, "I don't get on the ice." That are hardcore yeah. fishermen. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. That, I think that's what. Yeah. Are you driving at? Hundred percent. Do you get now, like that that fear the first time out for the the season on the ice? You get like that the the jitters there where you you have a hard time. Yeah, yeah. definitely, definitely. I mean, I know. I think you know it takes it takes all the right safety precautions and knowledge to get to a point of like knowing that okay, you know, I'm I'm safe or you know, I'm second guessing myself and the second that you second guess yourself, you're like, go with your gut, get off the ice. Um, but I I'm super cautious. I always have um I always have ice picks around my neck for the first month of fishing and um a spud bar. And I I mean I don't go more than a foot at a time, not checking every step that I'm taking to make sure that, you know, I'm, I'm on at least two inches. So two inches is my minimum for when I hike out and when I pack out, uh, three is probably more where I want to be. If I'm going to be, you know, getting a little bit more into the depths, um, of particular spots on lakes, but from, you know, I, I'm never going to explore a new lake, <laughs> you know, yeah. and right. First thing in the season, I'm going to wait till there's a little bit more safe ice before I get on a new body of water. But you know, my, my lakes that I'm really familiar with, um, I kind of know what I'm looking for. So that's always, helpful to know my body's water. Uh, but yeah, I mean, there's still moments, even like last season I got out on first ice and we had our temperatures switched like a dial. Just, I mean, it was just on and the ice was forming so rapidly that just the sheer sound that the lake was making was just enough to just like (laughs) to give you a pit in in your stomach because you, I mean, it sounds like it's going to break out from underneath yeah. you. But in, in reality, it's actually, it's the sound of the ice is forming below you. So it's, That's it's a really interesting phenomenon yeah. when it, yeah. When it, uh, when the ice kind of turns on like that. Hmm. Have you ever fallen in? I have, I have, uh, yep. I, I made a really, I made a really dumb mistake and I like heard my dad's voice in the back of my head. I was trying to take a shortcut onto a lake once. Uh, cause I didn't want to have to hike out like over a mile. So I was like, Oh, I can cut this trip in half. If I, you know, go on the other side of the lake Well, there was short brush really close to the water's edge, which is a sign of moving water in Minnesota at least. And I started coming around the corner and the second I stepped on the ice, I knew that I was in trouble mm. and I could hear the sound underneath me. And I immediately opened my picks out of, like out from under out, out of my neck and by the time I got them unlocked I went straight through I just you just when you go through like that you know I was up to my I was up to my waist I caught my arms on the ice and uh, uh yeah it was terrifying but I luckily like you I you know I had like a split second to remember like here's what you do mm-hmm. <laughs> so it wasn't it wasn't quite as like 
okay, like this is my time to like practice everything that I've been told since I was a kid of what happened. Yeah. So I got myself out just safely. Like you, you actually sit in the water for like a minute until you, that initial adrenaline, like calms down, which is really hard to do. Because that has to be the hardest part of it all. Yeah. Because you're instant, you instantly want to just start clawing your yeah. way out and you actually need to wait until you can like, get yourself to like a steady, like deep breath, even though, cause you're, you know, like you've, I'm sure you've jumped into freezing cold water at some point in your life where you're like, <gasps> you know, your yeah. breath gets like knocked out of you. So then you just wait till you're calm. And then I just, I had the first, you know, push I did, I just jammed my picks in the ice, pulled my body out. And ironically, I knew somebody that lived on the lake. I went to their house, threw all my clothes in the dryer and then went out fishing anyways. <laughs> <laughs> but, I wasn't going to waste the day. So. Probably never told dad about it either. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I shouldn't tell people that, but I definitely, I definitely did that. But that, it, yeah, that experience was enough to uh, make me avoid short brush. Uh, I, yeah. There was an underground spring that I didn't even know was there. So I want to touch base on that too, because around here we don't fish. I mean, at least the guys at the table here, we don't generally fish 200 yards or less from shore. I mean, yeah. we fish a lot of lakes and stuff. So uh, I, I see you guys with, like, snowmobiles and trucks and blah, blah, blah. How far out sometimes are you fishing from shore? You know, uh, in early ice season, uh, I'm, of course, going to be checking when I'm walking out. And I, I'm a big fan of, because of my experience falling through, I'm a big fan of I pack light until – you know, I really, really know that it's safe and I see yeah. multiple trucks going out. I mean, even if I see other, even if I see vehicles on the ice, I'm still going to be self-checking. I'm going to be punching holes left and right just to make sure and measuring, you know, that it's safe before I bring any vehicles out there. But you can go any, once, once it's to a, a safe thickness for vehicles or walking, you can go anywhere on the lake. I mean, of course, naturally it's going to be thicker towards the, you know, more inland, of course, but yeah, it's, it's just going to be, once it gets to a thickness in the middle, you can, I, sometimes I'm parked miles out into the middle of a lake. <laughs> so that's, it, that's what I was going to ask. How yeah, big of a lake are we talking crazy. about? Um, yeah. I mean, a lot of people, you know, the big bodies of water, uh, that were kind of famous for in Minnesota, you know, Mille Lacs Lake, Red Lake. I mean, those lakes are, when you get on them, you feel like you're on an ocean because you can't see the, you know, you can't see the other side. So, I mean, people drive miles on those lakes. Um, uh, up north, the uh, Lake of the Woods, people will drive, you know, sometimes you drive an hour <laughs> to wow. get to your spot. So, wow. uh, yeah, it's it's just that cold that we we have ice thickness that'll, um, you know, you could, don't quote me on that, but you could probably drive a semi on some of them. And where I just was in Manitoba, it was, we had 31 inches of ice, so you could oh, drive, we were driving pickup trucks. Uh, big Durangos, everything way the heck out in the middle of the lake. So, mm. how long does it take the main part of that lake, like a mile out? Does that freeze at the same time as you know, 10 yards off the bank, or is that a lot longer of a freeze time? Um, it's longer, out? it complete every lake is totally different. It's you know, if it's being spring fed, if it's being you know, e every lake is different, so you never want to just you know have an assumption like, oh, you know, if it's 10 inches by the shore, it's going to be 10 inches in the middle. That's not the case. Um, mm -hmm. you know, at a typical average lake, you're going to have more ice thickness towards the shoreline, and then it's just going to sprawl you know out towards the middle. So uh, you know, but like I said, it, it, there's no blanket, <laughs> there's no blanket yeah. safety term I can use to, to, you know, cover all the lakes, but, um, what's, you know, typically it's, it's going to be thicker towards the outside. What's the speed limit? <laughs> that's a good question. <laughs> I, I don't know. That's, that's, if there is one, I, I don't know. Oh, I'm sure they give bad, tickets but. around here. <laughs> You know, if it's if There's it's unmarked, it's fifty five or something, yeah. right? Isn't that the rule? Yeah. <laughs> They're just clocking people out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's a guy in a white car sitting behind it. <laughs> I don't know how you. Uh, would, I mean, how long does yeah. it take to stop if you're going fifty five miles an hour? In the ice? Yeah, <laughs> he's got to chase, chase you while you skid for a while. Wow, I I haven't even. Yeah, it's a that's a brand new thought in my head. I wouldn't even know. You yeah, know, yeah. That we just don't drive one. Mm -mm. If you were to fall through a mile out, is there current at all out there? Like, because if you fall through the hole, can you not be swept away from the hole? 
Um, I, I would, again, I think that would depend on the body of water. And right. if you're on a, if you're on a pretty stagnant lake, I don't think there's going to be a lot of undertow or undercurrent, but if you're on a body of water, like a chain of lakes or a river system, yes, I would, I would definitely probably guarantee that there's some movement of water. Um, you know, depending on the ice thickness that you're dealing with, I don't think you're necessarily going to get swept away if you're able to kind of, you know, jam your arms out straight or something like that, you know, you might be okay. But, um, you know, with pressure, one thing that we deal with a lot, uh, especially in our larger bodies of water are these things called pressure ridges where the ice, the pressure of the formation of ice co- combined with wind and other factors create these giant i mean really they're like big ice dams of it looks like you know it's like it's kind of like a mountain formation but with ice and out in the middle of the lake Mm -hmm. and so a lot of times especially in these big bodies of water where there's a lot of people congregated fishing uh and especially people with permanent ice shacks um some people get stranded out there until somebody comes and builds you know what's called an ice bridge so it's these big steel uh, grates that they will create, uh, like a pathway with, you know, for tire, like a tire width apart. And, you know, people will get out there and they'll use all sorts of tools and everything to create these ice bridges. So people can actually exit off the lake. Cause I've been on, I've been out in a sleeper house sleeping on the lake and all of a sudden, you know, you knock your head against the wall or you fall out of bed because the pressure ridge has moved your, um, has moved your, you know, chunk of ice so dramatically oh, that you actually like get shook. Um, you know, there's no I risk. Didn't know that. you. She's really starting to talk me into. Yeah. Well, no. yeah you guys want to go fishing? She's talking me into <laughs> trying catfish noodling down in Alabama. Yeah. You know, I don't think I'm going to mind getting in that alligator infested water now, <laughs> given yeah. the other option. Uh, hell yeah, I'm, I'm making gonna... this sound really, really fun. Yeah. No, yeah. I mean, with it's hand it's... at this point. Right. Pressure Ridge sounds See, like a reality get, TV we... show. I mean, that. there's all kinds of movies out there. I thought I saw every shark tornado movie there was. But I can't imagine a horror film of, because I'm sure it's happened, all joking aside, of somebody sleeping in one of these little houses or being in a Durango <laughs> and falling through the ice. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You that's Well, crazy. anytime you drive on the ice up here, even if it's 40 below, you unbuckle your seatbelt, you roll down your window. That's the first thing you do the second your wheels touch the, the leave the shore. If not before, you unbuckle your seatbelt, you roll down your window. I would have never because, thought of it. Yeah. 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 There's always stories. There's every year there's um, reports of people going through the ice, at, at least from what I hear, it's more so people going through on snowmobiles and ATVs right. um, mm. that think that, you know, they're just at that threshold level of where it's, um, you know, between, you know, like 10, they, they, where they might think it's like, you know, five inches, but really it's four or less, you know, cause five, five to six inches is like safe ice for ATVs and, um, and, and ATVs. So that's deemed by our, our department of natural resources here. But yeah, I mean, if you hit a thin patch on uh, your cruising, a lot of people will go in head first, you know, they hit their head, et cetera. But, uh, you know, it's, it's the, the thing, you know, like you're saying, a lot of people fear the ice where you are up here. It's such a part of our culture to yeah. respect the ice. You, you know, you don't, you don't mess with the lake. You, you know, you, or all safety precautions come sure. first. So you see a lot of people with picks, you know, their ice picks around their neck through mid December. So everybody, at least for, for the most part that I, I notice, um, you know, really take that seriously. You know, of course you, you get a couple dimwits here and there that think that they, <laughs> they, yeah. they might know what they're doing and they put that, they put themselves at risk and Pennsylvania no fish, is coming up. No fish. Is, yeah. <laughs> Come kicking around nope. in August with a Fox pelt around his neck. That's yeah. Stevie. We got this. So <laughs> if I do recommend though, if your car does go down, I would mark that spot for like a reef yeah you know what i mean it's gonna be good fishing <laughs> for the warm year. waters i yeah, can't believe the crappies true. wouldn't want to live in a dodge ram right <laughs> get your money back at you know over the course of the next however many years oh yeah thing. so on a to be out on the ice for 10 12 14 16 extended period of time what do you got to take with you when i go out i take everything i can take will fit in a five gallon bucket that's Jerky. an excellent question you know i i i fish solo a lot um and i'm a big fan of packing out i like to hike out um you know it's it's really good exercise and i just like to you know it's like it's a, a form of just being dependent on myself mm-hmm. and so i'll i'll pack out there and you know i bring um i'm a big fan of pop-up hubs 
in particular. You know, a lot of people really like the flip over style houses. That's great. Uh, if you have an ATV or snowmobile, but if you're just hauling out, um, yeah. I can put like a small otter hub, um, pop up on my back. And then behind me, I can tow my auger, my heater, uh, you know, a bag of food, my rod bag, my lures. Um, you know, and that's, that's really all you need. It's really the basics of, um, you know, just if you're going to be out there for extended amount of time, um, it's, it's a lot less than you think. A lot of times too, we get caught up, you know, we joke a lot for those of us that are really into ice fishing. It's like, we have so much gear, like it's just gear, 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 all the gizmos and gadgets. But if you really just, you know, (laughs) if you really like just, you know, get it down to what you really, really need, it ends up not being all that much stuff. So, um, yeah, I mean, just packing a lot of propane, having a really good, um, you know, having a really good shelter, uh, if, you know, the wind picks up, I, I tend to, if I go out for a long day, I usually like fish the first five hours just out on the ice. I'll, I'll punch a spread of holes over, um, some structure. I'll just fish around in a, you know, a pattern until I really figure out, okay, here's where I want to set up, set up for, you know, once the evening bite kind of comes in, um, and mm-hmm. then I'll pop up a, a hub or something like that and keep yourself warm. So um, but yeah, food wise, we, we bring grills, we bring, um, you know, those propane stove tops. We do fish fry in the ice a lot. Uh, it's yeah, it's kind of a, a, you know, convenience food in, in its own, you know, its own, anything that comes in a package yeah. <laughs> is pretty easy. Um, you know, we, it's, it's a great time. Lefsa. Uh, Lefsa, I have not had yet on the ice, but I, I definitely had my fair share of that over the holidays. <laughs> What? What? <laughs> what? What is that? What's Lefsa? Uh, Lefsa. It's the other side of Reitza. Reitza. I've had Reitza. <laughs> no, you haven't. <laughs> it's a. Uh, I'm lost. It's like a very thin Scandinavian. Uh, it's, pancake. It's almost like a yeah. It's like a pancake. It's super super thin. A lot of people put like put butter on it or Just like cinnamon it a or sugar. Yeah, yeah it's a, exactly. P- it's, but it's it's a like Scandinavian a, crepe. It's like a potato base or something like that. Something yep. on the, yeah. Just say you like a really thin it's, pancake. Yeah. <laughs> it's like a potato based <laughs> crate. It's a, I'm not saying it. I'm not saying we'll it, Frenchie. Say it, Frenchie. <laughs> Break it, Frenchie. It's a crepe. These colors don't run. Yeah. <laughs> Does a standard ice auger work in 16 inches of ice? Not Stevie. Because Stevie can't <laughs> drill through four inches I knew of that ice. Was coming. When you say standard, do you mean a hand auger? Yeah. Yeah, if you want to get a really good workout, uh, <laughs> you know, it's going to take you a lot longer, but I, I've done it before. I'm, I I usually, if I'm driving on the ice, I usually pack a hand auger as a backup in case something goes wrong with my, my regular auger. And I've drilled through like over two feet and it was the worst. <laughs> it, was, it was not wow. fun, but um but you know, I guess yeah, that's where I mean, I'm fishing today. The one hole I drew. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> I wasn't yeah. drawing another one. Yeah, old one hole yeah. catfish. It's, yeah, that's what they yeah. call them. Well, they have they have battery operated ones now too. Down, nowadays, do they not? Yeah, I um I made the switch to battery last season. You and did. I did. Do your did. batteries I, last in the cold? Yeah, I don't you mean know, to we be were, skeptical, but what is? I mean that I know traditionally. That's a battery, question I had too, right? They yeah. don't hold up. I was skeptical too. Um, and I, I made the switch to the strike master lithium 40 volt and I never really got it below anywhere below like 10, 10 below Fahrenheit. And then this past week when I was in Manitoba, um, it was 40 below. Fahrenheit. No, it wasn't. Yes, it was. Oh every, man. When we, when we would wake up, it was 40 and we were, by the time we were on the ice, it was usually anywhere between 30 below or 40 below Fahrenheit. <laughs> Stevie's out. And, and I was so Maybe surprised. Maybe with his like, box, it, he won't be. Maybe. We had, yeah, we only had one like kick out, um, a couple times just because we left it outside the tents. But, um, the other ones, yeah, I mean, as long as you keep them decently warm or like, you're not leaving it outside and that for hours on end, yeah. uh, it did just fine. No, it's good to know because we were actually looking at buying one for the group, right? Yeah. If you didn't have any trouble with a 30 below Pennsylvania winter should be just fine. I would think. I would think that that auger has been a game changer for me. Um, just as a smaller, female uh it's just the the sheer difference in weight <laughs> is life-changing for me and i can you know if there's a foot of ice i can easily get 
over 80 holes out of one battery. Well, that, it, that brings up a really good point, though, because, uh, like, obviously packing out weight's a big deal. Mm-hmm. You want to be able to pack as much stuff lightly as you can. Yeah. So that brings up, a, a like, a whole other topic that I, we need to get on here is what gear, what actually fishing gear do you carry with you when you're going out by yourself or in general? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I'm not, um, I'm nowhere near the size of many of my uh, ice fishing counterparts, the big burly men <laughs> out there. I'm usually, I'm usually dwarfed by, by most uh, of the average anglers. So I have every size of the otter hubs, but I, if I'm by myself, I have the smallest one, which is the cabin, and it only weighs it's around like 26 pounds, which is amazing. And I can just yeah. put that on my back like a backpack. Um, and then in my sled, I will carry, um, uh, my Markham, my lithium shuttle, and then, uh, my rod case and my rod bag. And if, depending on the species that I'm targeting that day, I'll usually lighten up what's in my bag. Like if I know that I'm just doing crappie or if I'm just doing walleye, you know, I'll, I'll switch out my, um, you know, my, my lure cases and everything just to lighten it up and my rods. Uh, what else do I bring? My heater. Um, just, you know, like a big, a, the average big body heater, uh, some food and my auger. So that's really, I mean, kind of just for like a basic, if I'm just hauling out, um, that's, that's going to be what I'm going to bring. Um, you know, I'll probably have my, um, when I, when I hike out, hike out, I never, I typically never wear my top layer jacket. I'll just, you know, have a, a, you know, some sweatshirts and everything on and I'll throw my jacket in the sled. So that would really be the only other thing that I would wear. Even when so. it's 40 below. Well, not when it's 40 below, like on an average winter day, it's oh. like anywhere from like 10 you below. Know. Yeah. 10 below. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah, 10 below. yeah. I'd be wearing a buddy Shorts. beater on my back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, that's, that's kind of the basics of what I would, what if I would take out with me. Yeah. All right. Well, so Stevie can never go fishing with you. If you ever come down here pure fishing with us, you'll find out why. He, oh yeah, he just the kitchen, he comes, the kitchen sink. Comes oh, with. He comes bass fishing. He brings twelve rods, <laughs> four bags, lunch, a bag for me because he's nice enough to stop at, at Rudders and get me Monster Energy drinks. Right. So that's a whole other bag in itself. Yeah. And then once he gets all that in the boat, he'll like, oh, hold on, I forgot something. <laughs> I forgot two well, more bags. And to your point, we went hiking the other day. Yeah. He put on two jackets <laughs> to go hiking. <laughs> you know, I said, you never dude, know. Normally people like strip down, they, you know. It, and when we got to the top, what did I do? I was able to shed layers. You, yeah, exactly. It, Layering is the smart way to go. I, I'll give you credit, Stevie. <laughs> Sweat on the I, way up. Tried telling him. What kind of boots do you wear on the ice? I'm sorry. I, there were since we're. We're pressing the 46 minute time. Are there so many thousands of questions I have? Yeah. No, I ask away. Um, no, I, um, I, the only brand of boots I will, I'm pretty brand loyal when it comes to boots. Um, Baffin is the only brand I'll ever wear. I have, even when I was in Manitoba and 40 below, my feet were toasty and I'm, I'm the type of girl person who my hands and cold, my hands and feet get cold really quickly i picked the wrong sport to be in yeah uh, <laughs> but i yeah no i i always wear i always wear bath and boots so i get their like arctic um arctic ones that are you know tested on the antarctic ice or whatever and i, I they they do the job every time do your toes get cold no they don't in those boots i pr- i i'm like I wish I could be like a testimonial person for them because I I've like written reviews. It's one of the few brands yeah. I'll write reviews for because I'm like these keep your feet so warm. It's Stevie insane. Stevie wants them for seed duck hunting. Yeah, I, I try to convince these guys that you should get as many pair of socks on as you can until you can just barely get your foot in the boot. <laughs> but they don't I believe would- me. See, I'm not, I I was raised to think that you don't. That's what you're not supposed to do. Yeah, it's too much pressure. That's, thank you. The circulation off. That you you are absolutely correct. <laughs> Stevie you. doesn't listen. Well, that would explain why my Sorry, toes Steve. are always blocks of ice. I told him he, yeah. he can't wiggle his toes. He's getting cold. Ryan, what are you what are you showing over there? I'm taking a look at those Baffin boots right now. Baffin. Yeah. I thought that's I fell baffling. in love with my uh, <laughs> with my muck boots, my Arctic Pros, but. You're in love I with can't guarantee that uh, they'd hold up to 40 below. 
Yeah, that no, I, be, uh... I mucks are great. Mucks are fantastic, but I, I've been with some people who are wearing mucks and their their feet are ice blocks and mine are just toasty warm. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Somebody's going shoe shopping mm-hmm. later tonight. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> well, we did get what was the year before last, two years, three years ago, we got that minus twenty six. We had like a minus twenty six day here. Did we? Yeah, that's really cold for around here. Yeah, yeah. but even yeah. to to go out and sit in a in an archery stand for four or five hours in in late season when again it's only going to be you know, 15, 20. 15, 20 degrees, maybe you get a little bit of a breeze. That's still because you're not moving around. You don't have an option to move. Right. Yeah, you know? and you're up in the stand. You got your feet on a metal platform. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Baffin. Baffin. Mm. Hmm. Baffin. 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 Hey, spell that. Baffin this episode me. brought to you by. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> MFJerky.com. Yeah. That's right. It's like they're, it's like they're paying us to talk about it. Half, yeah. half of Pennsylvania just went out and bought new boots. B A B A F F I N. Yeah. Well, that's, that's what we're going to look into. Yeah. Hmm. On let's let's talk a little more about the actual fishing part. What what do you normally fish for? I see, on your Instagram page, you have some pretty. A unique fish that you've caught there. But what's your favorite type of species to, to fish for on the ice? Well, I have to give crappies some serious credit because I think that was a species I fell in love with as a kid. And that got me really, um, yeah, that really just got me into angling altogether. Uh, we would target crappies a lot in the summertime. Uh, and the particular lakes that we would go to when I was a kid, I mean, they were 15, 16, 17 inch crappies consistently. And I just, that, you know, it, wow. it's like a, it's like a fight of a, you know, of a, for a pan fish, you're yeah. getting like a, a bass fight. It's just so fun. Um, so I, I definitely, uh, I, I particularly love that species. Uh, I like to target, you know, particular lakes where I know that, you know, the species are a little bit on the larger side, of course. And then uh, walleye is a very, very, very close second, if not tied for that, that same number one spot. So those would be my, those would be my, my first two. Um, eel you know, I, eel pout, yeah, burbot are, burbot. are, yeah, burbot, eel pout, whatever, whichever you prefer, um, depending on, you know, where you are in the country. I've too. never caught either one, so I'll, I thought they were speaking French again. <laughs> <laughs> Burbois. <laughs> they look like a bowfin. They're yeah. called uh, okay. it's, it's poor man's lobster. Yes. Uh, a lot of a lot of really? people think they're um, yeah. A lot of people think they're bottom feeders. Right up but Stevie's actually, alley. Yeah, I like the sounds of that. <laughs> keep, keep that coming. Stevie's buying some. Ship bourbon. it my way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll send it on some dry ice. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. They're boy. Those fish are. We have a whole festival uh, in Walker, Minnesota that revolves around the eel pout. It's called eel pout fest. And it's just a total party on the ice. That's and, madness. Yeah. That's, that's yeah. kind of what I was hoping we'd lean, you know, talk about. Cause it, there's the, a party on the, the ice. ice fishing festivals Yeah, up there yep. are, uh, you know, you hear like party cove and you, you know, different mm. places, you know, around the world where boats dock up and this and that, this thing is just thousands of people on ice. <laughs> oh, that sounds like place. a morgue. Yeah. Not- <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I'm so used to going, get uh, after, away from me, so, you're too close. <laughs> after a tsunami. Okay, so real, real quick then, because I've seen some photos of some of these fishing uh, festivals. Yeah. We're calling them, right? Yeah. Um, and it looks, A, like a ton of fun, mm-hmm. and B, a big ton of fun. Um, there's two different things yeah. that are the same. They're very different. Yeah. I got you. However... I have to ask the question, do you risk, you know, uh, the integrity of the ice by drilling that many Ooh. holes that close together? With that you know, much weight in it. Yeah, with that I, much I'm, weight. I'm no scientist, but I think we've been doing it long enough, and I, they wait until the ice is really safe that, you know, thickness-wise, that I think it's, it's perfectly fine. Wait a uh, I, I don't think that, like, you know, if you drill two holes close together – they're not going to, I mean, nine times out of 10, you're, you're never going to have, you know, all of a sudden the ice is going to break between those two and break apart. I mean, if it's, if it's a foot or more thick, there's nowhere for that ice to go. So mm-hmm. it's, it's not just going to create like a chain reaction. They're not going to, mm-hmm. um, you know, spider web to each other or anything like that. Um, and if they do, 
you know, I, I, like I said, I don't think ice, ice floats. I think a lot of people think like, Oh, the ice is going to break through and it's going to sink. You know, it's like, if you think about a glass of water, ice is floating anyways. And there's really no reason for it to just sink <laughs> into the, into the lake yeah. for any, any reason. So, so um, those are all valid yeah. points, but Stevie, I want you to remember what she yeah. said at the very beginning. She's no scientist. <laughs> I am not a scientist. I, can, I don't want to make any. I don't want to make any claims, and then all of a sudden, this season, all of a sudden, you know, oh, three hundred people go through the ice, and they're going to be like, because Doctor Anna, Anna said so. Uh, yeah, Anna said that would happen. <laughs> treat, treat me but like, it's funny though that, that those things. There's big money. There's all kinds of yeah. partying going on. Well, that's what I was uh, going to say. Treat me like a new listener. I don't know what you're talking about. I've been sitting here. To, is this like thirty people sitting around a campfire? What are we talking about? No, oh gosh, it's like I have no clue because I don't know what you guys are talking about. This party on the ice, yeah. They well, depending on which one. I mean, some of them are are, um, yeah. I mean, they have whole giant, you know, those big event tents. Uh, those will be all over the ice. There'll be like stores on the ice, food trucks. <laughs> what um, food trucks? Yeah. Oh yeah, the hot it's, dog it's, guys there. The guy <laughs> hot dog, more than hot dogs. I mean, you like those fancy food trucks are all out there. I mean, it's it's a uh, whole it's a whole shindig. I mean, hundreds and hundreds of people. I said uh, I didn't I, understand that when you said it earlier. I thought it was like there's a crab cake sandwiches. Oh, I had yeah. no clue such things existed. I want to see it. Yeah, it's kind of a. You should look up um, the. Oh, I'm totally at a loss for what the name of it is. But every year. Um, in Brainerd, Minnesota, they host the world's largest ice fishing uh, contest, and it's like I think it's it's several thousand people that participate. And is that where Paul Bunyan is? <laughs> the, I'm not. I won't even get into that because there's so many towns in Minnesota that claim to be where. Paul Bunyan's from, but we have, really? we have I'm sure over a, do, a dozen or more very large statues of Paul Bunyan. All the guy the got place, around. So. I mean, he's from a lot yeah. of places. <laughs> Fair <laughs> enough. I'm just I, yeah. I feel very, I apologize because I feel very uh, you, uneducated. No, about you ice, would die. Yeah, ice, yeah, yeah. We, should make, we should make a trip. I, no. We know, Don't we honestly know enough people up there now. We could get a pretty little. Pretty cool, nice little, little pilgrimage. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You guys should. You should guys, like Nicole and I will take you guys out, and we we have enough. We have enough gear to. We have enough gear to sink a ship, not sink the ice. But we could. <laughs> we could definitely. Out, we could definitely outfit you guys if you if you wear your bath your bathroom boots and. There's a new hashtag for 2019. <laughs> What's that? I got enough gear to sink a ship, and. But not, but not the, the, the ice. Well, <laughs> so the ice, the ice floats. I hate I hate to drag us back into fishing, but yeah, no, do but, it. But let's <laughs> let's say let let's say um, we're gonna take you to a lake where we catch hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of crappies one after the other in the summertime. But we're gonna take okay. you there to ice fish. What are you gonna start first? How are you gonna? Assess. Assess that lake and, and where to start fishing. Uh, well, first, uh, there's a lot of factors that come into play, so I, I won't try to drag on, but uh, I'm going to look at the structure of the lake, of course. Uh, crappies in cold weather, once the, you know, once, once the pressure goes down, the oxygen levels uh, shift in the lake in the wintertime, crappies are known to congregate and suspend over basins. That's kind of their go-to um, for just how they feed. Hmm. Uh, particularly here in Minnesota, you know, sometimes it's the smaller lakes that house, you know, some of those larger, larger crappies. And what they'll do is, you know, a lot of times those, you know, they'll have phytoplankton in them, worms that'll, you know, come out of the, the the mud basin, and they just will suspend there all day, and they'll just kind of pick off any phytoplankton and eat that throughout the. Um, throughout the daytime sometimes depending on the lake um you know they'll shift around they'll kind of move up into the shallows especially during early season and late season we see that a little bit more but like midwinter it's kind of um it's kind of known that they really like to school up over deep basins however i say that it makes it sound easy but uh crappies are really they're always on the move they don't ever you know, stationary suspend. So 
they will, if there's a basin that's large enough, I mean, those, those fish will cyclically just, you know, kind of travel around that basin. And sometimes they'll, you know, they'll travel around one small circle within that basin and so forth. So, um, it's a really, it's a, it's a constant game of hide and seek. I can go to, yeah, I can go to a lake that has one huge basin, fish a spot and just, you know, catch crappies all day and then go back the exact same time the next day, exact same conditions and they are gone. Hmm. <laughs> it's, it's, they're just constantly on the move like that. And what are you throwing for them? That's Stevie's next um, question. You know, I, I, I really like, I like to start, well, it depends if there's forage in that lake, if that lake is known to have a high population of shiner minnows, um, you know, in it, um, which, you know, in, in Minnesota, we have the ability to look that up online. We can see what the forage is in the our lake. So I'll start with live bait if that's the case. Um, if I don't find the information, if I know it's more of a, you know, buggy, uh, lake where there's a lot of those worms in the mud basin, um, I'll start with, I'll just do small, small jigs and plastics, uh, anything that mimics a worm like presentation. Do you find during the winter that the fish kind of group up by species more than, uh, in open water? Um, yeah, I would, I would say so. I, particularly panfish, um, you know, de- you know, any of the decent sized bluegills or crappies will school up, mm-hmm. uh, you know, more our, our walleye population, any of our predator fish, um, not necessarily walleye. Some people, uh, tend to think that they, you know, they call them pods. Um, they're not schools, they're pods. It's very particular oh, difference. Um, I didn't know that. <laughs> uh, which is, you know, it's, it's not a full school. It'll be just, a, a, you know, three to, to maybe six or eight at a time. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, they, they're going to follow similar patterns, but any of those predator fish, they're not going to, they're not going to necessarily, you know, compact together, but the, the schooling fish, I would say yes for panfish or anything like that. Okay. I have never personally caught a pike or musky through the ice and I see your pictures. What is it like to catch a big predatory fish on, you know, for you on one of them small ice rods? Oh yeah. That's the best. Uh, it ha- and it happens all the time. I'll be, you know, I'll have ultralight gear, on my ultralight panfish rod and then I'll get, <laughs> you know, a 30 inch Northern will just come cruising by and be like, Oh, that looks good. <laughs> uh, and it's, it's an absolute blast. I think the instant reaction is you, you loosen your drag immediately because you don't, mm. a you don't want to lose your lure and B you know, if you want to try to get the fish up the hole, <laughs> you're going to have to, you have to give it some slack. Uh, but it's, it's just absolutely exhilarating. Uh, you know, we're not, We, a lot of people who target the predatory fish do a lot of tip up fishing here. Um, and that, that's one of my favorites, especially, um, I have a lot of nieces and nephews and I love taking kids out to, you know, we call it chasing flags and, you know, then you're, you're hand lining some of these massive predatory fish in, um, and you know, they're fighting you and they're ripping the line out of your hands. And it's, it's just, it's just such an adrenaline rush. I mean, it can be a little, it can be a little guy or a big one. And it's just, a, it's just so much fun. It's, that's probably one of my favorite ways to fish with my family. Uh, when there's kiddos involved is, is tip up fishing for predator, predator fish. Cause, cool. um, yeah, you can have a whole bunch of family fun. Well, if we make it up there, I'd like yeah. to do a little bit of crappie fishing and a little bit of that. That you'll you know, need a whack of that for us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, it's funny. Cause it like, I I've noticed that I have a lot of family, um, I have a lot of family members that are kind of down towards your area. I have some people in Kentucky and, and Tennessee and their fascination with the predator fish is really heightened. Whereas up here we see like Northern Pike as almost a nuisance fish. Yeah. Oh man. <laughs> it's like, yeah, it's, Sounds it's like the bass. Yeah. It, it is. It's like our bass. Yeah. They, in they, Canada it was like, I remember. Yeah. Wow. They didn't care. Yeah. It's them. except for when you're in Canada and Canada, when they're, I mean, when, when, you know, the Northern Pikes are, are 40 plus inches and you're like, Oh, sign oh me yeah. up. Cause, <laughs> because we saw yeah, some that, really, that. that was really Minnesota nubbing. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's, it's exhilarating because those fish will just, um, those fish will just, you know, take whatever you got and they, wow. they put up a heck of a fight, you know, right away through the ice when you've hooked into a, a Northern Pike, because, they they make themselves known when they when they're on the end, end of the line. Will and I last year when we were in Ontario, Canada, we were on uh, we were in a back cove of 
a lake in the middle of nowhere, Lake Nipigon, I believe. Anyhow, the oh, yeah. water was so clear. We saw, we saw pike. I'm not, I'm, it looked like alligators, <laughs> yeah. and they wouldn't hit anything. But they're just. I mean, they would. It was like they were looking through. There was nothing between the boat and them. Like the water didn't kind of exist. It was so clear, and they were looking at the boat and throwing lures at them. Yeah. And it's almost like they have a little. Excuse the term, but shit eating grin looking at you going, huh? Mm-hmm, I see you. They like, I don't know if murky water might help a little bit. I don't know. They would swim up to your bait and then swim away. Yeah. Like poke at oh, it. Yeah. A <laughs> lot of people associate for musky and northern pike in particular, associate, um, you know, I'm sure you've seen those fishing apps where it's like the lunar patterns of when they're, you know, the hot bite is. Yeah. And I can't, I, and for whatever reason, you know, I didn't used to really believe in that. I don't think it applies to all fish species, but for whatever reason, Northern Pike up here, I, I will say that it's totally true. I I've been in a, a spear house before with a huge spear hole in it and we call them dark houses up here. And it's amazing. You'll see these huge pike come in and they'll, they'll just, they have the ability to just kind of stationary paddle themselves and they'll just stare right up at you through the hole, (laughs) but they won't, you know, they won't, they won't hit anything. They won't bite anything. And it's like once that hour hits when they're ready to feed, they are in a frenzy. Hmm. Jerks. (laughs) On we, uh, (laughs) jerk pike. (laughs) On a, we close out, we started a new segment by closing out each, uh, episode with five questions that um, you know are kind of quick, quick answer questions here. Uh, we call it a fast five. Fast five. Before fast we get five. to the fast five, fast I was five. hoping you could give us a coordinates real... to where you fish. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I yeah, was no going to ask for that offline <laughs> here, but <laughs> go ahead and tell us online. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> could, could you give us a quick rundown on uh, Outdoor Bound TV? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, Outdoor Bound TV is a, uh, it's a Midwest based, um, hunting, fishing and outdoor adventure show. And we broadcast throughout, um, the Dakotas, Minnesota, Wisconsin, a little bit of Illinois. And we actually are now, um, this past season, we are actually on all of the outdoor channel, uh, the outdoor channel Canada. And then I believe we're also being broadcast in a couple places in Russia, if I'm not wow. uh, mistaken. So yeah, it's a, uh, it is a rapidly growing uh, television show. You can access, even if you don't live in that area um, where those are being broadcast on ABC, um, you can watch them on YouTube. So it's just outdoor bound TV uh, YouTube channel. And we Perfect. put all the episodes out there and uh, it's, yeah, our team is fantastic. I mean, I, you know, the all whether you're into hunting, open water fishing, ice fishing, you name it, uh, we have kind of something for everybody. And we um, we partner with a lot of really great brands. We have a lot of really really knowledgeable people in all those sports um, yeah. come on board and and really kind of show show you what it's all about. And I mean, they, they filled some episodes hunting all of the world. So if, if hunting's your, your fancy, it's, I would definitely recommend tuning into some of those episodes. Cause there's some, there's a, uh, there's some really cool stuff that uh, they've covered. So. Cool. I like the sound of that. Yeah. Yeah. Outdoor bound yeah. TV on YouTube then check it out. Yeah. My, my episode of last from last season just aired and we just did a girls weekend only. Uh, and we're actually in uh, a, a permanent uh, yet, yeah, yeti ice house and uh it was just me and two of my my best childhood friends and we had a girls weekend on the ice so that's a pretty fun that was a pretty fun weekend it was Sounds it was like 20 it. it was 25 below that weekend so that's why we were, we were inside the fancy yeti so <laughs> wonderful <laughs> yeah so, wonderful exhilarating <laughs> so ryan's gonna kick us off here with question number one of the fast five in no particular order all right, so we'll hit it with question number one. What's one thing you can't live without in the outdoors? Oh, that's so hard. Well, we call it Fast Five, so you better, <laughs> you better, you better pick up the pace. It's not, you blew not it. going very fast, is it? Um, can, I, can, I say, well, can I say something as generalized as yeah, fishing? No. Like fishing? Like yeah. my, Absolutely. My, Perfect. Yep. My, maybe my, my crappie rod. That's what there I'll say. There we go. We should have actually prefaced all of this with there is no wrong answer. Yeah. No the, wrong. yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> Yeah. You'll get a hundred percent on this. I promise. <laughs> uh, what are you most proud of? I think I'm most proud of, you know, kind of overcoming the barrier and, and being, 
uh, I think I, I overcoming the stigma associated with like being a woman who wants to independently pursue the outdoors. And, you know, I don't, I, I don't ever feel like I need to depend on the man in my life or, you know, a, a whatever, a, a significant other or, you know, a, a guy to help me. Um, I think sometimes, especially in, in ice and fishing angling. Um, yeah, I, you know, it's, it's, it's sometimes it's intimidating, uh, to be kind of that minority in the sport mm-hmm. and being able to get out on the ice and do my thing and outfish mm-hmm. <laughs> friends, family, whoever, uh, everybody, I think it's, it's, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> and kick <laughs> butt. Yeah. That, yeah. That was a humble break. But, you know, <laughs> I, <laughs> uh, yeah. I think being able to do that and, and kind of overcoming that, um, you know, just that, that initial fear of like, okay, I'm going to do this by myself, um, is something I'm really proud of. I'm proud of you for it. It's girls. Thank it, you. It's, it's women like you and Nicole Stone, Midwest Fish Girl. I can name a bunch of them, yeah. you know, that are the real deal is why that, that stereotype will be gone in the near future. Oh, yeah. Because honestly, it, you know, I, I give credit where credit's due. Um, some of you girls can put me to shame and I, I feel like I <laughs> fish every day. You know, I was fishing today before the podcast. I was looking at the lake going, hmm, I don't know how they do it day in and day out. Looking at some of their IG accounts, they're super impressive. Mm-hmm. Oh, thank you. That, uh, thank you. I really appreciate that. It's really my whole goal and, and social media and stuff like that is to get other young women involved and say you can do this if you're interested in it don't be intimidated by it and i love i love getting especially like younger girls you know who who are still learning like that is that's the most fun to see them catch their first fish or drill an ice hole on their own it's just like you can do this and it's it's yeah. just that's so rewarding to me i think it's great too and because you know and this this is my personal opinion in life but you know if you want to keep your kids out of trouble out there get them into hunting and fishing because you oh, won't yeah. have money for anything else yeah they'll be yeah. good you know? <laughs> yeah. 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 Oh, i'm totally gonna i'm gonna use that that's great i love that <laughs> but it's it, it is i mean you're broke all the time but your heart's filled so <laughs> so true yeah. so true anyhow stevie i'm sorry i'd derailed you're good thank you medium pace five keep going <laughs> <laughs> on a what what's one thing you do daily to prepare for your outdoor lifestyle constantly look for the next challenge pursue a new lake get on different structure figure out you know if 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 the dnr website says that there's you know only however many walleye in that lake, I'm going to find them. That kind of a thing. I love, that's what keeps me constantly motivated. Um, I just, I love the pursuit of a new challenge. So that's, that's what keeps me going. All right, good nice. answer. I like that one. What's on your bucket list? I kind of want to go back to uh, my mother country, homeland. I want to go back to Ukraine and uh, try fishing for bream and roach through the ice Mm. uh it's a whole nother game that we would need a whole nother podcast to talk about that but um getting to talk to some of the guys on the american ice fishing team that's where they compete and it is no electronics it is it is hand lining fish only it's like as basic as it comes and it's like i hate there's videos on youtube (laughs) to check out and it's like that would be like the ultimate challenge. So that that's on my bucket list to go back to where my family is from and ice fish. Last question. Number five, uh, what makes you happy? And you can't Ooh, say ice fishing. We're getting, <laughs> we're getting deep around here, aren't we? Yeah. Well, you know, uh, I love it. It's um, I like think Lake of the woods here, over here. <laughs> <laughs> um, what makes me happy? I think building relationships with other people, uh, who, building relationships with other people who are just starting to get into the outdoors and um, kind of seeing that interest blossom and get people in, more involved and, and learning from each other. That's what makes me happy. Like, you know, Nicole and I are grew up in two very different, uh, I'm just using her as an example, grew up in two very different um, like forms of learning to fish. And her and I have been able to learn so much from each other. Um, even though we're both like, you know, we're very similar level of angling knowledge. We, Mm -hmm. there's so much to learn and that's what really makes me happy. Like making new friends who are just as involved, um, in the outdoors and just learning from each other and then helping other people who are new to the sport learn more. Mm -hmm. That's a great answer. That is a great answer. 
Ana, you've been a really awesome guest. I learned a ton, a ton God, from you. And, uh, it, His pen's out of ink. He's been taking it, a lot of notes. Yeah, I, I, I went through four <laughs> pens. <laughs> well, I don't. I didn't know I was that. that I was teaching you. <laughs> just, yeah. talk, His, just talking about what I like. So I'm glad. His, you, Am- I'm glad you yeah, His Amazon cart's full. <laughs> oh yeah, I got those. <laughs> 10 pairs of boots on order. So, but no, really, I appreciate you taking the, taking the hour here to, to chat with us. Uh, and, uh, yeah, keep doing what you're doing. It's, it's awesome to follow you. Yeah. And so she is Anna on ice, Anna, A N A underscore on underscore ice, follow her on Instagram and, uh, check her out on outdoor bound TV on YouTube. On the YouTubes. Check out the YouTubes. Anna, thank you. Yep. Guys, thank, thank you, thank you guys thank you. so much. Well, yes, keep up the great work. Work. I love the love the show, and thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. Our pleasure. Right, thanks. When we're out ice fishing, we like to take Moses family jerky, and uh, mm-hmm. if you use <laughs> rut, <laughs> send me some. I'll send you some bourbon in exchange. That sounds great. Be careful. <laughs> <laughs> I got a box full of it in front of me Sit here. right here. <laughs> Go to mfjerky.com. That's oh right. God. And uh, our promo code is Jerky Pursuits 15. Thank Jerky you. Pursuits 15. I Get knew there was going to run in there. Team percent <laughs> of the whole order. Coffee, jerky, website. everything. Yeah. Yep. All of it. Do it. New snack sticks coming out soon, too. Well, we heard tell that there are some. I saw, something in I the saw world. a post on Instagram about it today, too. So teriyaki? Is that teriyaki and the. Uh, spicy, right? Yeah. And the spicy. Huh. So You guys. I don't know what you're going to do because you lose your minds already. The The sweet sticks just drive me bonkers. Come and get your... You know what I would like to take up there whenever I go fish with Anna? What's that, bud? I'd like to take one of them bow mitts with me, see if it works. (laughs) (laughs) Off fishing bow rod. You'd have to take it off your bow, though. Yeah. Well, I can get another one. I I know a place where I can go get one. (laughs) Where would you go if you wanted to go get another one? I'd go to betterthehunt.com. Oh, yeah. Dot com. Nice. I think there's a coupon code for one of them floating around, right? Yeah. There sure is, bud. Rut River 20 will land you 20% off one of them puppies. All them bow mitts. Yeah. yeah. New, new boots, bow mitt. I'm set. Yeah. Bingo. Hands will be warm. I'm getting a bow Feet mitt be warm. Both, both hands. I'll just get a right and left-handed real ice fishing rod. I'll be good to go. Your go. MF jerky belly will be full. I love it. <laughs> Bless his heart. I love it. Burbot. <laughs> oh, that's great. Hey, awesome. Stevie. Hey, buddy. Where can they find us? Oh, pull on over to RuttenRiverPursuits.com. Check us out on all the social media outlets, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and we're also on the YouTubes, Rutten River Pursuit Podcast. Check out the YouTubes. Download the podcast on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. Spotify. That's my new favorite. Subscribe Love it. Subscribe to one of them. All right, guys. Let's hope we get some ice soon. Yep. This Won't really, be long, Stevie. Won't be long. This is killing me. And Anna was no help either. Just <laughs> rubbing that in. All right, guys. See ya. Very good weightless. What's one thing you can't live without in the outdoors? <sighs> That's so hard. Well, we called Fast Five, so you better, <laughs> you better pick up the pace. It's not, you blew not it. going very fast, is it? Um, What's left, sir? Uh, Lessa. It's the other side of Reitza. Reitza. I've had Reitza. <laughs> no, you haven't. <laughs> Crab cake sandwiches? Oh, I had yeah. no clue such things existed. I want to see it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>